and welcome to another stream of What The Tech. I'm your host, Rolando, and let's get this right. Over here in one of the magic squares. You gotta have that right by now, man. You, we look at the opposite side, or at least that's you how it is over here. what me up, man, is that I'm right-handed, and the <laughs> other monitor's on this side, so I have a tendency to look over here because it's got my notes for today, and I wanna go this way, but I know you're over I, and, and I wanna do the exact same thing because of the way that it is on my screen. Hey, Rolando, I am so excited for what this episode and for our guest today. Happy right. Tuesday, happy, happy Tuesday Tech to Tuesday. you and to everybody that's joining us today. We, uh, today as we're taping this, today is April the 13th. Mm. If you haven't filed your taxes, I believe that the IRS has given us an extension. I, I think another month, so don't get too stressed <laughs> out about that today. If you haven't done it, you have a, a couple of more days than beyond the 15th. There we go. Uh, I'm also excited today because uh, we have somebody that I actually went to college with uh, that I still know and, you know, actually doesn't live too far away from where I from where I live and you know most people like they'll spread out all over the place and in different parts of the world um, so I'm, I'm kind of excited to have her up close and in virtual person versus you know I'd love to have it in, in meeting and maybe in the office where we're, we're doing it together but hey um, I, I it's okay I'll take it so um, and plus I wanted to say Dave you, you think you've been through the cold slog of hard winters even I have been through Minnesota winters, which are probably as tough as you get. In some cases, worse than being in Alaska, and I'm sure she could testify to that. Yeah, I've, I've been out there in the wintertime, and yeah, it's no joke. It is no joke having snow up to here sometimes um, and going six months of it. So anyways, so uh, yes, yeah, so by now, yes, I'm talking about Eva Reed, who's going to join us here in a little bit. Uh, we are talking building community, Dave, with data and how that comes together. And everybody's talking, especially with our current times that we're in with COVID, community, 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 community. Um, and it means a lot to different people. And so Eva is the type of person that can help us from a technology perspective, from a data perspective, know how some of that's starting to coalesce. You know, I, I specifically wanted, maybe she could give us some insight into like the Amazon site selection. Now we know that the two places That's selected right. were only minutes away from Jeff Bezos house. Odd coincidence or not. You know, and I, I really enjoyed exploring this particular subject because I mean, I know that people don't flip coins when they're making these multi-million dollar, sometimes billion, billion dollar decisions. Yeah. And it's nice to have someone that's, you know, that participates in gathering this data and giving it to the folks so that they can use it to make the right decisions. That's so right. very, very cool. Hey, why don't we get into the trivia question? Let's I'm totally looking forward to this one because I heard I heard that uh, we're going to get thrown off on this one. So All right. I'm looking forward to see out. what Ori and the gang put together for us today. All right. So let's go through trivia. You want me to read it or you want to read it, Dave? <laughs> you know, I, I want to read this one. Okay, I want to see what, what, what they did to us here. So, <laughs> two truths and a lie. So, two of these statements are true. The other is fake. So, we did one of these a couple of weeks ago, and I believe I got it wrong. And, uh, I, you know what? I need to redeem myself on this one, All right, Rolando. Let's see, let's see if you can do it. All right. So, two truths and a lie. There's an island within a lake on an island within a lake on an island. I wish you were the one that was reading these, but I think I did a good <laughs> a job on that. twister for sure. <laughs> All right, number two, the entire world's population can fit into the state of Texas. Well, oh, Texas that sounds, that's a big, huge. big, big state, but I don't know. That sounds almost like Interesting. too good to be true, right? Well, hey, you think about the population, the dense population in places like DC and Boston and Philly, who knows? Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, but the whole world. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, number three, again, I wish you were reading this. Kublai hmm. Khan was the most famous Silk Road trader slash explorer. So what do you know about the Silk Road, Rolando? I know that there was silk on the road. <laughs> I don't know. I don't no, think it so. Was a, it was a trading <laughs> post. And I know that it wasn't called the Silk Road way back in the day it was a more, a more recent phenomenon i believe in the 1800s yeah when that term was coined it was called something else and i know that there was more than one silk roads well uh, so there's there's the famous silk road but there's different branches and 
stuff along the road, the the road, the Silk Road. So right, that's well, what I know about Silk Road. So two truths and a lie. We'll get the answer at the end of the show. All right, all right. Well, Dave, thanks for dropping some knowledge, and we'll find out at the end. So let's let's introduce our guest. Yeah, Eva. Eva Reed. She is a currently she is a senior information technology specialist with the uh, government of DC, but she has her own consulting practice, ER Consulting LLC. Uh, she does workshops, employee training, she does coaching. She's a, a phenomenal person. Uh, like I said before, I went to school with her and she's much smarter than I was. I believe she got better, better, much better grades than I did. Uh, she's, she's, she's presented at a variety of professional conferences. Uh, both in the public and private sector, um, and she knows how to get people together in a room and talk about coordinating and building communities. So, without further ado, let's bring on Eva Reed. Hello, Hi. how are you? I'm hey, Rita. Fine. Eva. How are you? <laughs> it's okay. Rita works too. Hi, Anthony, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going today? Where are you checking in from today, Eva? I am here in my home in Alexandria, Virginia, mm. and uh, kind of loving the telework life, honestly. Mm. Yeah, better than showing up to the office? <laughs> yeah, so there are good things and bad things about teleworking. Obviously, I'm protecting myself and staying safe, so that's mm. a good thing. Um, distancing, yeah. I don't have to listen to anybody else's stuff in no, the office. Don't, I don't have don't to listen to them. Nobody. I don't have to listen to them eating or anything like that. <laughs> um, the downside is I don't get to see people very often. Again, we're staying safe. We are, you know, not visiting with people, and that's hard. Are you um, all zooming a lot? Uh, zooming teams, zooming whatever. A lot. You know? You guys are zooming a lot. What? Just curious. Are you one of those that would say, "Yeah, I have Zoom fatigue," or you're like over it and you're mm. ready for person-to-person -person contact? Or where, where's your current head in in that whole space? So I definitely have fatigue. I think everyone does. Okay. Um. I don't think that's something that you, I, I would be surprised if anyone could say that they don't have it. Um. For me, though. The Zoom is kind of enough for now. Mm -hmm. I think the overriding factor for me is just, I don't want anyone to get sick. I don't want to get sick. No, um, no. you sure don't. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I feel you, I'm in the same, I'm so, same boat. So yeah, I think there's fatigue. I think everyone's feeling some sort of fatigue. Uh, I know I work with people that really would like to get back to the office um, because they work better in that environment. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're all doing what we can to make it the most like the office that it is. And so I think one of the good things is that we're, you know, people are meeting online and actually turning on their cameras occasionally. And, yes. you know, so we're doing the best we can really. And I, you know, I'll do it as long as I have to, I guess. There you go. That's right. Well said, as long as we have to. And, and I, I would like one day in the office, just one day in the office. <laughs> like. Up every couple of weeks just to you know be with people B mingle yeah well speaking of the office there is a place that's actually not far from you that went up uh, just recently amazon's hq2 which yes. i want to ask you about but before we get to that i want to play a clip Ori, do we have that clip ready uh oh <laughs> Yes. No, it's 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 easy. It's fun. It's like okay. you're, you're it, it's nothing like a we're not back in the Mac doing a, a quiz, a <laughs> pop quiz, right? Don't worry about that. <laughs> no pop quiz. So go ahead and roll that, Ori. Bids from across the continent and a lot of hype. So Amazon did what it knows best, crunched the numbers. We had lots of data, both data from external sources, data that we had gathered, and data from uh, the responses that the locations gave to us. On workforce, transportation, education. We knew it was going to be very competitive. In Crystal City, Matthew Kelly, CEO of real estate investment trust JBG Smith, saw Amazon as a catalyst for his firm's plans to develop the millions of square feet of office space it owns. We offered a lot of the things they were looking for in terms of workforce, in terms of existing infrastructure. 
depth of labor pool. It still took a coordinated push by the company and state and local government. We said one of the ways in which we provide value is by uh, investing in our human capital. Virginia's bid was the only one that included a new college campus right next door. What was unique about Virginia was its commitment to developing that long-term talent pipeline. And Virginia is also a great place to do business. All right. That's right. Virginia is a great place to do business. Our home state, big up VA. <laughs> so you had some a lot of things going on there. We had folks from the government talking about how important this was and uh, people talking about data, amassing data. And I wanted to ask you about this. Yeah, obviously, we have the HQ2 in our backyard here. Uh, how would you think, beyond the fact that it's not far from Jeff Bezos' house, right? We know he <laughs> lives in Maryland across the river, uh, right? Uh, what what would they have done to to like look at where they placed it? And I know you're you are a, in a, in, the, in the loveliest way a, a a map geek. I love geeking out on maps, so maybe that's what another thing we have in common. Yeah. Uh, tell us how some of that would have come together and they would have said, oh yeah, place it in Alexandria versus Loudon, which would have been even closer to Matt Backyard. Yeah, so they they likely did what's called a site suitability analysis and they probably used geographic information systems, mm -hmm. which is the tool that I use to basically understand the world. I am a geographer, geographer by training. I am very interested in the kinds of questions that Amazon would have had to ask in order to figure out where to put their, their building and put their campus. So they would have taken, let me step back for a second. So geographic information systems, one of the first things that I tell people is that it's an integrating technology, meaning that we can take data from a lot of different sources. So like they were talking about in the video, getting information from the city from uh and i will so i shouldn't say the city because it's technically it's a it's a county so mm -hmm. information from the county information from the state information from surrounding jurisdictions because that's always important things don't end at the border we kind of talk about right we talk about the world ending at the border between jurisdictions and that's really not the way it works people are traveling in from other parts of virginia they're traveling right. in from dc and maryland etc cetera, etc cetera. so we're taking data from all these different sources and the reason that we are able to combine them in the gis is because everything has a location regardless of whether you have an address or not, everything exists in a place. Right. And so we can provide an, a latitude and longitude, kind of like you learned about in grade school. We use that information, that those kind of data every day to say, well, these are the things that exist here and these are the things that exist over here. And if we take all these different topics, roads, um, land information, we take water information, we take, uh, they talked about population in the clip. All of that information has location, X, Y, latitude and longitude. So we can put that all on a map and we can say, all right, we're looking for a place where all of these particular things come together. So a certain kind of population, a certain density, uh, we have to have enough transportation options. All of these things come together and we say, okay, in this place, let's say Loudoun County, for example, we don't have enough of one or more of these things. So let's look at some of the other areas of Virginia. And in this case, Arlington County had all the things. They had all, the all the things they were looking for, I would imagine. Maybe they've ranked them and said, hey, okay, this is our yes. number one thing and number yes. two and number three and versus, you know, being out loud in or in Chicago or some of the other places that they were looking at as well. Exactly. And and the reality is that um, what we create with the GIS is in some ways a perfect situation. And so we have to look at some of the things, as you say, we have to rank them. So we have to look at, is this more important than this other thing? And if it is, then we kind of have to tweak the model right. a little bit. That's but interesting. that's what we're doing. And we do this, I mean, everybody does this. Target does it they, when they're trying to figure out where to put a new Target store. 
they're doing the same thing. It's just the variables might be different. I'm, I'm picturing like a, a really interesting battleship game where you have your <laughs> board, you have your X Ys, and, and you're filling yes. it in. And you're paying attention to the colors and where you might have missed over in this side. That's a great way to describe it because that's <laughs> literally what we're doing. Yeah. We're just using instead of, you know, A1, we're using a larger grid. Right. That's right. really the only difference. So what are some of the other like maybe more obscure data inputs when you're compiling all of this? So I think we have some of the obvious information, but what are, what's some of the information inputs there were data inputs that are used that maybe the general person like myself isn't thinking about sure. or considering. Sure. So, so the average person is probably thinking about things like, you know, is, is there a commercial space? Is there mixed use space? So we, that sort of falls into the zoning land use arena. Right. Some of the things that people might not be thinking about that the engineers have to be thinking about our soil type. What what kind of soil are we building on? Is this something that's going to be able to manage to support a structure of this size oh, yeah. and, and the weight? Um, other things that we might have to take into consideration. Um, I know, for example, in some of the models that I've had to run, we have to be thinking about what other businesses or facilities exist in that area. And there might be things that are incompatible. For example, when you're looking at um, where you want to put a liquor store, oh. you can only put a liquor store within a certain distance of a school, for example, and other things. So you need to take that into consideration as you are as you were doing that site suitability analysis. So it's not right. just looking at what exists, but also what can't and does not exist. It's so not it's close obviously, enough. That's what oh, I would say to my house. Not close enough. <laughs> not close Isn't enough. that all in Uber Eats? Don't they just <laughs> <laughs> they deliver it right Maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> but Eva, the, I mean, the accuracy of this information is so important. How, yes. how, do you, how, how do you control the accuracy of the data? Well, you do the best you can, honestly. And the reality is that it's never 100% perfect. Anyone mm. that tells you it's 100% perfect is either unaware or not telling you the complete truth. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we do these models, we run these models, and we do the best that we can to understand all the various elements. But we really, at some point, there has to be field work that's done. You have to go out and look at it and do the stress tests and figure out, you know, what can already, what can go there. The good news is in a, in a place like Arlington or anywhere really in Northern Virginia, a lot of that's already been done and we can rely on other resources. Mm. And that's particularly important when we're talking about pandemic times, because there are things that we just can't do right now or that are not as safe to do. So we have to have other methodologies. But the reality is that everything needs to be vetted in person. And, you know, we've seen, um, oh, there was a case in, I think it was in England and London where a building just essentially, I'm trying to think where it was, but anyway, like a building collapsed because they didn't consider the soil type and the structure underneath the ground and they didn't consider you know the weight of the building and all of the etc cetera, etc cetera. so you would think that that would be like one of those things can we actually build this here it'd be a nice place but is is it suitable for uh money money as i would imagine time, some money. Is doing surveying and whatnot is is uh you know cost money but i guess it'll cost more now to, that the building is gone right yeah. And I, I mean, I, I don't want to imply that people are doing things improperly all the time. They're not. It, it's just that when it does happen, it goes spectacularly badly. And then we all hear about it. No. So I think in general, people are doing a really good job of figuring these things out. Um, obviously, because we have a lot of buildings. It, yes, you know, it a all lot works of them out don't fall. The time. <laughs> but it, I mean... Honestly, money plays into it. And and again, anyone that tells you it doesn't is, and is ignorant, it, it, honestly. Is ignorant or, or, or just not aware. But I'm sure that's that was probably the case here with Amazon as well when 
Uh, they were looking at site selection and um, yes. Arlington versus Loudoun versus Chicago versus St. Louis and other places that wanted to be in the hunt for that. Yeah. Um, and I, I would again, I think the number one factor I heard this from Scott Galloway, professor at NYU, mentioned that this was months, like six or eight months before the final his, uh, decision was made. He said all those places that are not within 30 minutes of any of Jeff Bezos house eliminate yourself now you have no chance <laughs> yeah. and, and and he was prophetic and very true he's like you know miami would be nice but he probably doesn't there's not a lot of stuff there he's got his uh washington post here in town and several other things and a home in maryland and not one, one not far from new york city so those are going to be very high places on yeah. his list so uh yeah non economic factors at play on that one and i'm Absolutely. sure that there's Absolutely. a lot of areas that are just they're like you know what it's okay it's okay that we didn't win the bid for it because perhaps it would have been a a wish that you wish you hadn't made right i i know i mean speaking completely unofficially yes there are cities that were just like you know what i mean I, new york ended up in the news they were just like you know, they said no. We, well, they didn't want to give any incentives, and then they right. ended up going back to New York, anyways. Well, right. I mean, when, <laughs> it's <laughs> yes, um, but I think that I, I think you're right, Dave. I think that some some cities were just like, this is not feasible for us. And the reality is that you know, Ro, you talked about six months before, six eight months before, um, the, this professor said, "Here's what I think is going to happen." Some of these cities have been working on this proposal for years. Sure. So, you know, it's, there's a lot to it. And I think that's the other thing that people should understand about this technology is that there are so many, it's dependent on a lot of things. It's dependent on people having the technology. It's depending on the data being available. Right. And because, I want to ask you, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that is, that's a critical piece of it. And that's the thing that people are like, oh, can't you just download the data and then you can make the map? Well, no. Yeah, it's not that easy. It has to be there. It, and, and, and DC, for example, is really lucky because we had, you know, and, and again, I'm, I'm speaking unofficially here, but DC has a lot of this information already prepared because it's part of the mission. Right. Right. So, and and you're right in the middle of all the agencies that would probably be your customers, essentially, yes. of that data. Yeah. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure they would want a lot of accurate, a high level of accuracy when you're talking about using things for policy decisions. Yes. Uh, or in this case, you touched on it a little bit. And I want to see if, whatever you could share with us on how that c came together during COVID, because obviously nobody was prepared for this type of level of a pandemic we heard oh yeah pandemic you know with the ebola and sars okay we, we did fine this was way beyond anybody's level yeah. of expectation or preparedness how how did that what happened when when this hit and how were you guys able to utilize any of this data uh for for either the public good or for the agencies involved the, so covid was a pretty amazing example of how organizations can work together to develop all of this. So I will say, and this is true of many jurisdictions, it's not just the ones here. Um, everyone's probably heard about contact tracing at this point. Yeah, and the reality is that contact tracing is done all the time. It's mm. constantly being done for things like food poisoning and other diseases and um, just numerous things like anything that can be transmitted by humans is basically being contact traced all the time. So we're collecting information from, you know, people calling in to say, you know, I got food poisoning at this restaurant. Oh, by the way, five other people did as well. So that data is all coming into the various health departments. Interesting. Um, this is basically next level to that. So right. not only are we doing that contact tracing of, of reaching out to people or, or people calling in to us, all these health departments, but the health departments are actually reaching out. They are calling people, people are uh, using the various apps that have been created. So there are a number of apps that basically tell you using uh, proximity 
sort of detectors detectors um using proximity <laughs> they they're they're figuring out like who's been exposed right. and then contacting those people and saying okay who have you been around all that's that kind of thing so this is really humans reaching out to other humans and collecting data and then putting it in a big database and saying all right what are the patterns and the really exciting thing about that is i get to interface with these folks and say well we can map this and we can actually see where these things are happening we can see how people are being exposed because they are you know they're showing up at the same supermarkets and they're showing up at the same restaurants and oh by the way there's this park that didn't like put up barriers and so people were showing up there or whatever. I, that's not right. a real example, right. but um, those are the kinds of things that that we're doing. So this is not new. This is just, we've amped it up to, you know. <laughs> to the next level. Yeah. And you know what? The contact tracing word as a word and words matter, I think in the, in the, in the general lexicon wasn't out there like it was. I, I, if you have not heard of contact right. tracing, you've been living under a rock for right. you, right? <laughs> Right, but right. Uh, you know, in this country, especially once you got to talk about contract tracing, the way they've done it in other countries, like in China or Japan or a lot of the Asian countries, where it's right on your phone, yeah, and they're using that that sensor, yes. uh, from your phone to know if you're close too close to other people that have, have been infected, and um, we haven't used it or we haven't utilized it like in other countries. Um, yes. That's a whole policy thing I don't want to go into, but the fact is we haven't utilized it like to the effect as other countries who have been right. able to bring down their rates a little bit better than we have. But contract yeah. tracing, I had no idea because right. you know, you're telling you're educating us. It's been around for a long time. It really has. And it was kind of exciting to me to see. I mean, I knew about it again. I'm a geographer. This is the kind of thing that we do, but it was exciting to me to say, I, I mean, it was horrifying, but also exciting <laughs> because I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this is actually real time. We are doing this real time. And, and as you say, we could be using sensors to figure all this out. And as you said, I mean, there are policy issues with this. There's right. privacy <laughs> concerns there. I, you know, like it's oh, a little scary. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a little scary for the folks that have privacy concerns for sure. But yeah. how is like how is this data used for actual policy making? So anytime we're using information like this, we are aggregating it, meaning we are taking groups of data and yeah. analyzing it by group. Okay. Okay. So so I want to make that really clear. The individual data at this point, and this is pretty typical even without COVID, individual data are never shared. They're so. used by the health department because, you know, obviously we need to call people and say, hey, you may have been exposed. But when we are actually doing the analysis and we're doing things like figuring out where to place an Amazon building or even just to say, like, these are the COVID numbers, we're always grouping our data in a way that will anonymize it so that we're not sharing personal information about Eva, Dave, and Rolando, <laughs> right? That, make, that makes me Whole feel Foods. a little bit better. <laughs> that no, makes and, me feel a little bit better. No, and I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said that because this is something that we as people using data are very concerned about and aware of and don't want to share information by mistake. Right. We, you know, the times that it's happened, the federal government has released social security numbers by mistake. Um, it's not happened because someone wanted it to. It's happened, well, there are bad actors, certainly, mm -hmm. but the people working with the data are very concerned about maintaining privacy. That is just, I just, if I could make everyone aware of anything out of this whole podcast i i would want people to really understand that we are not sitting here going "Ooh, how can i use this we're saying "Ooh, how can i use this in a way that is appropriate i see so so um from a government perspective the the reality is that there there's a lot that goes into keeping privacy in check for, yes. from an individual perspective so that 
individual information is not exposed and used or misused. Exactly. And I, you know, certainly I can't speak to everyone's implementation, but generally speaking, you know, there are multiple firewalls, there are procedures in place, you know, to address the human factor, because I think that's an important conversation in all of this. Um, only certain people are allowed to have access, you know, and then none of this information, you know, there's, there's a whole lot that goes into just the security piece of this before we even do any sort of analysis. Hmm. Um, you know, and I, certainly we never want data to get out, but I think the past examples that we've seen in the news have really helped us to shape our security policies. And again, I'm saying our, I mean, the data world in general. Right. Well, that it's it, it is a new world. It isn't it, it really is is. completely a new world. And part of the new world that I wanted to ask you about, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring back some video. I reached into an archive here where you were talking a little bit okay. uh, about <laughs> about about your experiences about the new world and how uh, women are blazing a trail in, uh, in technology. Uh, and how things are changing in the in the workplace as well as, well as in the in technology sector. And I want to, Ori, can you bring that video up so we can share that with, and you've probably seen this already. What? Uh, the, uh, the first one. Oh my God. <laughs> it comes down to it, really, what I do is I build communities. That's what I do. Yes, I build data sets. I work with the Metropolitan Police Department and I help them develop their crime data sets and I help them develop data sets to identify why certain crimes are happening in certain areas. And I work with our Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency and I help them to, I do training for them and I help them build their data sets and really what I'm doing is I'm building community. Awesome. I want to know more about this building community and how, how and Homeland Security police and uh, I would, there's people at the end of it, right? Uh, that they're making decisions about. So I want to hear more about this community building. What What's that about? I'm going to say first that it's a passion of mine. And I think the reason that it is a passion of mine is because well, community is at the base of everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're we're constantly building community, even from the time we're little babies. You know, we have our little friends, and and that builds our sort of safety community and um, allows us to learn and and you know develop ourselves as human beings. So I think that it's just something for me that is is part of who I am. Um, I realized very early on in my career, and this is before I was even working with Homeland Security or any of those folks, um, I learned very early on in my career that the only way to get things done was to meet people and talk to people and ask for help. Yeah. <laughs> so in order to do that, I had to meet people and I had to get outside my comfort zone and I really had to... Um, well, like I said, I just had to meet people and I had to not only meet them, but I had to keep those contacts and and nurture those contacts so that, you know, five years from now, when I'm coming back around to the same project, I can say, hey, remember when we were working on this thing together? Right. I need help again, <laughs> you know, or I have this new thing that came out of some work that I did. And I wanted to share that with you. And I think that's the really important piece of community is that it's not two way, or that it is two way rather. Okay. Um, we talk about networking a lot and I feel like networking is so just, it, it's, it's, it's very like this and community is more like this. And we are connecting with each other in different ways and we're trying to make connections between different people and all of that work helps us to do our jobs and did COVID make that job harder yes. in any way because you can't 
just walk over from your office over to DHS. You can't just say, oh, I'll be over there, I'll meet you for lunch and right. or go over to HHS for whatever reason and say, yeah, we we could discuss this matter, you know, tomorrow or whatever. Right. Uh, so it did. So it made it more complicated. It really did, because I think that we're still doing a lot of that, what you were just talking about. We're still doing that, you know, hey, um, I, I need help with this, or I'm doing this and I need your input. That's, that's still happening because, you know, we're using all these different technologies to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I think the piece that has become very difficult is those sort of in-between moments where, you know, we're just kind of chit-chatting and, um, we're not talking about necessarily those super important things. We're just making those connections and we're developing that. So, so yeah. are there, are there any examples or stories that you can share how you were able to kind of overcome some of those obstacles? Absolutely. Um, so one of the things that I do with my consulting business is I was running networking community building event. <laughs> and I know it's and I like, think no those one... two words can go together. I like how <laughs> you can. I, I like how you talked about networking. It is kind of like this. Yeah. Community is this, but you don't have this without this. Right. You have Maybe. to, you have to do this. That's right. <laughs> and so I was running events where, um, and these were particularly for women in tech and we were doing these events partly because women in tech aren't as visible many times. So we were trying to at least become visible to each other. And so it was important that we were meeting in person. So COVID happens and I've been running all these events at local businesses, you know, restaurants and all this kind of thing. And um, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> what do we do? And everyone's like, well, we can't meet in person anyone anymore. What's going to happen? Well, the good news is that I was running part of my consulting business using Zoom anyway. And I thought to myself, well, you know what? Zoom has the option for, you know, however many, I think it's 100 people. Uh, you know, we could have 100 people on one call. Right. So I literally just said, look, I need to pause for a month so I can get my ish together and <laughs> figure out how I'm going to do this. But let's not stop. Let's take this online. And it, no, it's not going to be the same. I mean, that's the thing. I think we really have to consider that it is not the same, not but the same. we can still mm -hmm. connect and we can still build and continue to build and develop our community. Well, I, I, I think that, you know, even though that uh, the physical aspect of being near somebody and talking, I, I enjoy that part. I've probably seen like my mom more than I have or my sister <laughs> in, than I have. in, in you know, they, they both live in Florida. And so, right. um, you know, I would see them periodically through the year, but um, I've seen them way more than I ever have. Uh, so Absolutely. it does help build some of those connections that you're talking about, especially if you're talking about it from a government to government perspective or government to business perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, again, there is no there's no complete substitute for being in person, but we do the best we can. Right. I mean, it's kind of what we were saying before. Um, I, too, have seen many people more now that we're virtual than I have because we're making more of an effort, really. I mean, yes. that's what it comes down to. It's not 100%. even just that we have the technology. We're just making more of an effort. 100%. Um, and that effort goes back, you know, earlier when we were chatting, you said something about and then people started turning on their cameras more. And I think a lot of us, even though we had the technology, we weren't turning on the cameras. Yes. You know, I mean, let's face it, video has been around for 20 years in different forms, different ways of transmitting mm -hmm. it, but it was always available in one way or another, but we were so shy. We didn't, yes. we didn't turn it on. Yes. So it's nice. I think this has pushed people to a, to a place where they'll be comfortable with it and they, they kind of want it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Agreed. A hundred percent. I mean, I, will be the first person to say that I'm not a super fan of being on video all the time, but I've gotten comfortable with it Same. because I've had to. And it, I, wonder, I wonder if that's also a generational thing, you know, yes. like if you were to talk to the, the kids, so to speak, 
<laughs> you're on social media you know hey, oh yeah what's up? Do, 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 oh do yeah it. my little cousins yeah. they don't yeah. care <laughs> <laughs> they're like let's facetime <laughs> yeah i i would hear facetime like that nah, I, really yeah. yeah. I, I i have to do it at, before pandemic you know because you have to for business right. or whatever but if i don't have to i don't have to but now it's it's an it's it's become more routine so it's not like yes you know back in the day oh facetime okay right and I think I think the routineness of it is kind of nice in a way. It's just as you say, it's made it easier. Um, it's also just given us. It's taken away some of the ick factor. So yeah, no, for sure. No doubt. No for doubt. Sure. I also want to share a story that you were um, in from that same footage that you were talking about. An example of a, of a, of a I think it's a colleague or a female that that couldn't take time off. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to ask you about it on sure. uh, on the other side. Ori, go ahead and cue that up. I don't say I build community. I'm a facilitator, really. But we build community. We get together, we talk. We talk about the issues that are happening in our community, both as women and as GIS professionals and just people trying to do good in the world. I had another instance where I was at work and DC government doing whatever it was that I was doing and I had someone come up to me and said, you know what, I'm afraid to take time off to take care of my family. What do you mean you're afraid to take time off? You have leave, you can take leave and you should just put in for leave. And she said, no, I'm afraid to take time off. I'm the only woman on my team and I'm afraid if I take time off, I'm gonna look like I'm not doing my job. That's a problem. We have things in place that allow us to take time off and to take care of our families. We have sick leave, we have annual leave, we have all these things. But if you don't feel comfortable on your team enough to say, I need to take time off, that's a problem. So I, I wanted to ask you about this because this resonated with me in, in so many different ways. There's a human aspect here that I'm, I'm just so curious as to how other people are forget about work for a moment. Just right. how are you managing as a person with this, what, what's going on in the world? You know, it's changed a lot of things. Um, you know, work and home are very blended because it's all there for a lot of folks that are working from home. Um, if you have kids, um, you used to take them to school. Now they're, they're depending on the county they're in, they may be hybrid, they may be all right. at home or, or a little bit of both. And a lot has changed since 2018, since that was shot. And I wanted to ask you what, how, how other folks like yourselves or other, or basically women that may be raising a kid, managing, especially during this time, based on what we just saw here, that pe women are afraid to take off. Because let's face it, technology is a male dominated um, uh, industry. Uh, and because of that, it can be challenging for for females, just flat out. That's yeah. just a fact. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to see what the impact of COVID has had for those kinds of women that probably were in that same boat in 2018 and now facing the same thing in 2021. Yeah. So I will kind of, I will give you my example. Uh, I don't have kids, but I have an elderly mother. And I hate calling her that because she doesn't seem elderly to me, but <laughs> she is. Um, and she'd be the first person to be like, look. <laughs> mm, don't come right. here with that word. <laughs> um, it's hard. Mm. My mom, like, let's see. Uh, everything was great during COVID. Um, well, okay. So one of the things that I had to do, uh, my mom has a number of different health issues. Plus she's over 65. So she is in for several reasons the highest like highest risk you know mm -hmm. like before you get to the point where you're in the hospital already right um she was fine but we were really concerned that she would get it she's very susceptible to viruses and whatever so i started going shopping for her and i started taking her to medical appointments and i that was a lot and I was a hundred percent happy to do it, but I had to negotiate that with my boss and I'm mm -hmm. lucky because I am fairly senior in my office. I have a reasonable 
boss and no, he's really my bosses are very reasonable i don't want to i i don't want to disparage them at all my bosses are very reasonable but there is a feeling in my office about you should be working hmm. and if you're not working like what are you doing and set that aside I had to negotiate with my boss and say, look, this is what I have to be able to do to take care of my family right now. And I think that's true for anyone, regardless of who your family is, or what mm -hmm. your family looks like. Um, and I think as a woman in tech, I'm always, and I've talked to other women about this, I'm always thinking about how I'm being perceived by other people. So I, I was trying to be extremely explicit with my supervisor and say, look, I am not just, you know, faffing around doing whatever. I'm taking my mom to this appointment and I will be on the call. I will be in the car, but I'll be on the call. And it's ridiculous. Like, did I really need to be on that meet in that meeting? But I felt like I had to because otherwise I wasn't doing enough. And I literally She's not on my team, but I know someone who had a baby recently and was feeling like, oh my gosh, I need to be doing whatever. You just had a baby. <laughs> like <laughs> A very difficult thing to do. I'm, yes, I'm sure under the have... best of circumstances. <laughs> right. And here we are in the middle of COVID. <clears throat> like you've just created a life and right. you're worried about taking time off like you should be taking time off yeah. but we're not we're constantly it, i mean it's as a woman as a person of color like you have so many sort of hurdles and one of them is just being like everybody else and in order to be like everyone else you have to work two three times as hard and it's exhausting true, true that. it's exhausting um, and I'm lucky I have, again, my boss was very accommodating. He said, you don't need to like do FMLA or anything, just a uh, family medical leave act. Um, you don't have to do anything special. Just you have my blessing to take off what you need. And that's what I needed to hear. And so what I hear you I say, no, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. Um, I was just gonna say it, it sounds like a little bit like you're saying uh, there needs to be some communication there and it has to be in a dialogue. Um, th there may be some apprehension there because you know you got to tell your boss, hey, you know, I'm really trying to take care of my elderly mom, my 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 mother, senior mom, <laughs> my can, mom over sixty five, <laughs> my, yeah, my, my older 65. mother. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, I'd I'd like to be able to do that, but really, I'd I I don't want to. I don't want you to think that I'm I'm you know I'm gaming, right? Exactly. I'm not, I'm not gaming, playing Call of Duty or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> and it's good to have understanding bosses uh, that whether whether the same would apply if you're a male or a female. But I right. know for for women in tech, it's especially doubly challenging because you know they're just smaller numbers. Uh, and you're trying to, you know, make your put your name out there, trying to move up the, the ladder, um, and it can be doubly challenging if you're having to raise your family and you're, you know, carrying all that on your shoulders. It, it is. It very much is. And I think, you know, I, I hear it time and time again, too. I'm lucky. I work in a fairly reasonable organization that, you know, maybe could do a better job as an organization of explicitly saying, if you need to do this, you need to do this and you can take the time and that's why you have it. So they should be more explicit about it. But I have a fairly respectful organization that allows me to take that time and offers me a good amount of leave. Um, but I hear time and again, people saying like, oh, well, I took time off and then I got all this flack for it, particularly <laughs> women getting flack for taking the time off when they get back. And then having to justify well i was taking care of my kid right you know maybe no. the situation the situation has opened the eyes up of everyone saying right. you know what we we truly are in this together right. we need to be understanding and sensitive that everybody has a very unique situation exactly. and let's not judge let's not discriminate let's help everybody help each other 
to take care of their families and then reassure them that, hey, we're still we still have this business relationship and we trust that you're going to come back 100 percent. Yes. And continuing to be part of the team. Yes. And and that is unfortunately what is not always happening and it's not happening enough. And I think, you know, people ask me a lot of times, particularly men, they say, well, what can I be doing to help support the women in my office? Well, when they, you know, when someone asks for time off or says, you know, I won't be here because I have to take care of X, Y, Z, say, that's great. You should do that. Instead and of, yeah. we will. <laughs> or or the passive aggressive. And take, pick up right. the slack. Right? We've all, we've all right. worked. We've all worked for someone right. that made you feel like you were doing something wrong for leaving on time or showing up on time or taking a couple of vacation days that mm -hmm. have been allotted to you. Right. I'm glad that I'm not in that situation. Today. I've, I've, I've been there. I've worked for an organization prior to this where people would stay as long as possible in the office beyond the normal time to see who was going to be the last one out. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in other countries, I know in Germany, for example, there it's totally the opposite. Uh, they are out of there and they yes. will go to restaurants after work on a Tuesday where there are barely any people at restaurants here in, in the U.S. at that time. And so you could see a packed restaurant on a Tuesday, Wednesday, just like you would on a Friday or Saturday, because people, mm -hmm. the culture, the mindset is such that it's, it's bad to be in the office all night long or as long as you need to be or as long as possible, rather than, yeah, let's go out, let's get some fresh air, let's go have some some drinks, let's go. Let's you be know, human beings. Yeah. <laughs> True. Hey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not robots. Come we're on. Not, we're not. As much as we want to be, we're not. We're definitely I, not. Yeah. And I think that's the thing of it is like, we all want to do a good job. I mean, yes, there's the occasional person that like doesn't care, but I think most of us want to do our jobs. And I mean, most of us, like all of us, men, women, however you identify, we all want to do a good job and we're just doing our best. Right. And, and, and we need to support each other in that. I think that's so important. That's the key is supporting each other. And it goes back to my whole point about community. We can't build the community if we're not supporting each other, if we're not building each other up. And if we're doing stupid crap, like, excuse my language, but if we're doing stupid crap, like tearing each other down and telling people that we're not doing our jobs or going behind other people's backs. And I mean, I've seen it all. I've seen it <laughs> all. I've thankfully not always been the recipient of it, but I've had really horrible stuff done to me, not at my current job and not in the recent past, but. I'm sure people can relate, right? It, it's, totally. it's everywhere, every, anywhere where there's people gathered together, you yes. see some of this, right? Yes. Mm. So, you know, be good to each other. <laughs> right. That's, that's a, that's a really good, you know, I, I you've nailed it. That's that I want to, I want to end on that um, because it's a, I like positive notes. And I think a, a lot of folks that are out there have hopefully received that, whether you're watching this live or you're watching this on the playback. But before we completely end, I want to ask you a couple of rapid fire questions. Oh God, okay. Right? These are, these are, there's no wrong answer. It's just your answer. <laughs> okay. okay. So, Ori, we ready for this one? All right. So let's start with. Uh, so, because we want people to know Eva a little bit more. So if they want to know you a little bit more, we're asking you some, so a couple of personal questions, just, just, you know, to see oh, what God. you think. What is your favorite musical uh, group or musician? Do I have to pick one? <laughs> if you have more then again, there's no right answer. Um, I've been listening to a lot of, uh, really random stuff. I will say, um, oh God, I can't even remember the name of the group right now. Rolando thinks these are softball questions, uh, but not. this is one of the hardest questions. Do you have uh, a, do you have an eighties, nineties band, seventies? You know what genre you like? You know, I like stuff. I, this is going to sound totally dorky. I like stuff that has a good beat and you can dance to it in your kitchen. Okay, <laughs> like for some even people, if it's two thousand and late. I mean. <laughs> There's been a lot of pink lately, and I don't know that she's my favorite, but I, you know, you it like, works. You like pink. So it's not your favorite, but you like pink. 
I like, I, but I, the thing is, like, this is the worst question to ask me. It's like asking me my favorite movie. I don't know. <laughs> That's question two. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so yeah. I'll just go with Pink for lack of thinking of another one. Um, you know, right. but I really enjoy music. I guess that's my answer. I, All right, right. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll take that. We'll, we'll pencil All kinds of music. For... Classical, Pink. alternative, rock, you name it. All right. Pink plus. Pink plus. <laughs> also, she's kind of a badass, so, well, you know. She is. She's, 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 just, she's you know strong strong woman yeah. right not All taking right, any cool. crap from me no no <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite app on your phone right now instagram oh that's a first i don't think we've had anybody say any of the so no somebody said linkedin uh but yes in, I, I consider instagram more of your traditional social media and you're the first one to to um i mean out. you know me i like linkedin a lot and i use it a lot and i'm there so you know feel free to connect and all that but <laughs> instagram is has just been such a nice way to connect with people without all of the stuff like there's yeah. some there's some bad actors there too but um generally speaking less. A yes, less. a little bit less, and generally speaking, it's it's a lot more happiness. Yeah. Okay. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> At least in my Instagram. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Well, you know, the people like to post, you know, um, you know, they're 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 a lot of exotic vacations, and I'm over here, and I'm over there, and having a good time, yeah. and I'm mm -hmm. breaking up, I'm opening up a bottle, and you know, all this kind of stuff, right? I'm, I'm taking pictures of my dog, my food, and my garden. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not I'm not on Instagram yet. I'm this close to doing it, but one of my childhood friends had shared with me something where he had made a post, and it was uh, just a musician that we loved back in the 80s, early 90s, had liked what he had said because it was a lyric to one of his songs. And I said, did he... Did he like your post? And he said, I talked to all the hip hop guys that we loved back in the 80s. I'm like, that's going to feel good. He's like, yeah, I love it. He's like, it's fun. So <laughs> if I jump on there and I start talking to some of my childhood musician heroes um, and I get some responses, that'll probably make my day. <laughs> okay, I can't remember if it was Instagram or Twitter. I hate Twitter, by the way. I'm on it because I need to be, but I hate it. Um, but Mark Hamill liked one of my posts. Really? Yes. Luke oh, wow. Skywalker first crush may the force be with you <laughs> i got let's see let's see we're, we're throwing them okay let's throw my uh heidi klum liked something on linkedin mm? that see? was cool that was cool i was like what? Woo, 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 woo. that's pretty cool that's all I right so yeah. all right that's cool yeah yeah it can be cool when somebody famous like that they're like oh my god they saw my post awesome cool and it can be someone famous like in your field too yeah. yeah i've had that happen and that was i felt like a rock star that day yeah and we've remained friends so that's kind of cool oh nice 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 and, and nice. she knows who she is i think oh uh, yeah okay <laughs> And I'll she's probably her. watching you right now. She probably is, and I'll tell her. <laughs> like you know, you know that person. That was you. <laughs> that was you. Okay, we'll leave her anonymous for the show, but she knows who you know. Who you are. You know it's who you are. It's important to tell people that how you you know. It's important to tell people. All right. Cool. Cool. And uh, two more for you. Okay. Favorite food. Pizza. New York pizza. New York pizza. Oh, oh, you can't really. Go. That's one of those things that I, I'm so dying to, like, once things get a little more normal, I'm up into the city having good slice of pizza. The Pizza Box, Bleecker Street. Mm, I haven't heard of them. Bleecker. No, I'm not even sure props. that they're there anymore. If you, know, if you know, you know. If you, if you know, know, you know. You know. Are, are they in the, they're in the city? or Because there's a lot of yeah. you know, people in Brooklyn will say the Brooklyn's got the best, right? You know that Brooklyn Bleecker Street, house. just off Sixth Avenue, <laughs> towards the East Side. I used to live out near Coney Island back in the day, and there's some really good piece of joints out there that I'm sure could give Bleecker Street a run for the money. 
Yeah, I'm sure. But you know, <laughs> we love what we grew up with, right? Right. Absolutely. So, pizza. No, I can't. I can't argue with you. Uh, there's I, actually, I'll tell you offline. There's a couple good pizza places <laughs> that we found around here that I wouldn't say they're New York pizza, but where we are, I'll take them. They're really good substitutes yeah. for New York pizza. We'll have to. We'll have to share. We share. We share. We share. We we'll share, we'll share online. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last one for you. Your preferred method of communication, the multiple choice, you've got email, you've got text, phone call, instant message, or a DM. Text or me instant message of whatever sort. Yeah. I'm pretty flexible. I, you know, I, I prefer text message. I mean, honestly, um, okay. I don't love the whole like phone. I, I hate talking on the phone. <laughs> Don't ask me why I do it for my job. I, I've never liked it. it. It's part of being an introvert and no one ever believes I'm an introvert, but I am. I, I'm an introvert. I don't like the phone. Um, you and I've had this conversation before, Ro. Like, <laughs> um, on the phone? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> in person. <laughs> in the before times. Right, the before times. Um, yeah, so I'm an introvert. I don't like the phone. If I have to, it's a text message. Partly because I'm always worried that I'm, like, interrupting people. So I don't want to call them and be like, hey. And then they're like, can I call you back? Mm -hmm. So I prefer text message. I can have like insane text message conversations. Um, instant message is hard because there's the boundaries are bad with that. Yeah. Like my text messages, I can just be like, I'm not answering, but you can see if I'm online yeah. Yeah, like and people are like, Hey, and I'm like, <sighs> I'm in the middle of a call right now, you know? So <laughs> People don't have good boundaries and then they'll like message you and like keep messaging you until you respond. I'm mm -hmm. like, so yeah. I sometimes just have to shut whatever it is off. Cause I, I say, you know. look, I left my computer on. I mean, my phone is off my computer. It's right. running. So it'll say online at three, it, four, five in the morning, but there's nobody there to going to respond. Right. I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> you, got that right. you got that right. Well, uh, uh, Eva, I really appreciate you coming on today, yeah, shedding a you. lot of knowledge and insight into the tech space and data and how that comes together with communities. Uh, and talking about, we we, we, I, I, we could spend two more hours easily oh, totally. on any of these things, diversity and, and leadership and, and women's role in the workforce. Uh, I'm sure we will have you on again. Um, so that maybe we could do like a follow up on after really things calm down to see, you know, post post COVID, did anything change with the way agencies are connecting with people and building community? Because I'm fascinated about data. Uh, data informs us. It tells us essentially what to do and use it for predictive reasons. So I love I would love to. I would love to do it. And I've had such a good time today. So thank you. <laughs> I, great. I'm honored to be asked number one. Oh, and thank you. I'm thank you. You're so just, kind. Really. It was so You're much so fun kind. talking to both of you. You're so kind. When and when things when things do get back to normal, we'll we'll have a we'll do some lunch or something like that. I don't know. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. Dave, um, let's jump right into the last couple of bits here. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost yeah. forgot. I'm and dying to know the answer to this question. Wait before <laughs> and wait if people want to follow you, oh. Eva, what should they do? Where can they go? Where can they check you out? All right. So LinkedIn, I'm really easy to find. Just search for my name. You will see my face. <laughs> Put a note in when you request to connect telling me why you're trying to connect with me i do not answer generic i want to join your linkedin network your yeah. network <laughs> yeah because it's not a network anyway uh so linkedin and then also uh my website eva reed consulting.com i have all my events on there you can sign up for my newsletter I do not spam you with 8,000 things. It's purely like, this is information that you need to know. So. Terrific, terrific. So go yeah. ahead and check her out. LinkedIn, look on her website, evilreadconsulting.com. And make sure you send a note if it's on LinkedIn. Otherwise, mm -mm, it ain't happening. 
You will sit in purgatory in my queue. <laughs> <laughs> terrific, terrific. No, seriously, though, like it's about building a relationship. It's not just about making that connection. It's about having a conversation. And for me, that is key. And plus, I'd like to know how you found me, really. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, all good stuff. I can't disagree with any of that. All good stuff. Um, so thank you, Eva. And what we want to do before we jump to the trivia, Dave, we just want to remind folks that if you've loved this content, you want more of Eva, you want her to come on again, you want uh, content like this or something else that you think is of interest, let us know, subscribe, like, hit all the bells and whistles and all the buttons, because we also, Dave, release content that is not on our regular Tuesday podcast schedule, like nuggets, insights, uh, and some other uh, behind the scenes stuff uh, where we're gonna be coming out with that soon and some bloopers and a few other things. You'll only get to see that if you subscribe and you get notified. Otherwise, you have no idea we came out with that stuff. All right, so let's go to the trivia. I wanna know too, because I have no clue what the right answer is. <clears throat> All right, so we are, Definitely throwing this over to you, Eva. So, two truths and a lie. What do you think are the two truths? And what do you think is the lie? <sighs> I'm totally going to get this wrong, but I think that the lie is number two. I don't think the entire world's population can fit into the state of Texas. I mean, mm. I guess my question is how close do I have to stand next to everybody? <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be important, especially for today. Uh, number three is kind of subjective. Subjective, honestly. It is subjective, but I'm gonna put my money on three. Kublai Khan was the most famous. Oh no! Well, you have um, yeah. I am but Kublai also, Khan. I have questions about that one. Was he around during that time? He was. Maybe he was. Dave, what do you say? I just hope number one is the lie, so that you can read that as perfectly <laughs> as I did. <laughs> all right. All right. Or it's all in the pause. We're, we're, we're all pause. waiting here to see what the right answer is. True. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. I, I can, so it's in the Philippines. Look at that. I wow. Okay. Okay. So it's, let me read it for those that are listening to us. The truth here is that there is an island within a lake on an island within a lake on an island. <laughs> It's all about the pause. True. Do, do they get 5G? Oh, I don't know. Ooh. Do they get 5G? Oh, I've been told uh, our producer says, yes, they actually get 5G in that location. Sweet. Let's go. Maybe right. that's the uh, maybe that's where you work from home when you relocate. That's where I would go. And, and, and OK, number two. Oh, it's also true. Interesting. The entire world's population can fit into the state of Texas. The entire world were, and then we just read this, if the entire world were a densely populate, as densely populated as New York City, the whole population of 7 billion people would only cover 250,000 and thereabouts square miles. That means the entire world could fit into the state of Texas. Interesting. There you go. Wow. Crazy. I have some thoughts about that. What? <laughs> Drop some knowledge. Go ahead. Uh, no, I mean, more like, do I really want to be close to that many people that close? Like, I grew up in New York City. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's on a busy day, Manhattan, you know, three or four o'clock in the afternoon or even in the morning. Oh, my God. <sighs> that's a lot of people to run. I'm thinking, with. like, what comes to my mind is the subway mine too all right a so, lot of and last there we go Kublai Khan was the okay so it's false Kublai Khan was the most famous Silk Road traveler so that is a false uh, statement it was Marco Polo uh, during the 1200s up until the early 1300s was actually the most famous trader known or traveling to China's Yuan, or is it Yuan or Wan? How do you pronounce that, Ori? Yuan Empire when he was Yuan, 17, yeah. becoming part of the government of Kublai Khan, returning with great wealth and mm -hmm. spreading accurate information about China. So Marco Polo, Polo, 
Marco. Marco. <laughs> Polo. <laughs> <laughs> well there you have it dave it was number three i you know i did have questions because i was like i don't think kubla khan actually was a traitor but well you know whatever yeah well close enough right but, but clearly it was, it, it was a, i liked it ori thank you for the question it was awesome uh, i love i love not knowing sometimes i do kind of know because i did a little bit of research but in this case it was all ori and the gang so thank nice. you very much for that uh, we do have, uh, before before we go, Eva, do you want to say anything else? Oh, gosh. I, I think thoughts? I'm going to go with my previous statement and, and, you know, reach out and connect to people that you, you know, maybe have already connected with but haven't talked mm -hmm. to in a while. This is a really good opportunity to do that. Um, I have a great download that's going up on my website in the next, probably in the next day or so. Okay. Um, that talks about how to do that and and some tips for you to um, get your get your community building on. So be good get to each on. other and uh you know talk to each other and if you connect with me on linkedin i might even send it to you before it goes live with a note we'll check that out <clears throat> and before we completely sh turn the lights off here uh i'm being told we have some announcements on our upcoming show or show or shows or shows okay cool let's put it out oh here we go here's the slate oh i love this so we've got next week we've got a draft day special okay so it, yes it's it's a lot of guys just dave and i picking our draft picks because the <coughs> nfl draft is around the corner all right and so we're gonna do our own kind of draft picks our tech draft picks um in honor of the draft day we've got a i think dave one of the most two fascinating conversations that we've had in a long time one with Adam of IBM, who is going to break down some cryptocurrency and what ha what's going on with cryptocurrency and where it's going. So Adam Estrelli. And on the 4th, May 4th, we've got Sasha Sagan. We had a very interesting conversation with Sasha uh, and we'll be airing that May 4th. Uh, he's from PC Magazine on the best places to work remotely in 2021. So very interesting topic, hot on everybody's mind, especially now that people can work anywhere um, around the world, especially if you're a knowledge worker. Obviously, if you're a factory worker, that's certainly not the case. But if you're a knowledge worker, you can work anywhere where you have good internet. So, Well, we got some awesome shows coming up, Rolando. I'm really looking forward to the next couple of weeks here. Me too. Me too. Good stuff. Good oh, stuff. All right. Yes. Well, it, again, we want to thank Eva Reed and we want to thank all of you for tuning in today and we will see you the next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>